Good afternoon, Jags. This is Fahad and Chronicle. Today is Sunday, May 17th. We had some time in our hand, and this is a bearish pitch on a uh, Latin American Latin American bank called Banco Chile, symbol BCH. We would like to bring this one to your attention. As you know that in the chat room last week, we briefly discussed this one, and I promised I would come back with a full presentation to, us, uh, to show what the bearish case is. This is another beauty from Chronicle, who's with me online here. Chronicle, how are you doing? I'm good, Fahad. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. All right, let's get started. So uh, this is uh, Banco de Chile, symbol BCH, a Latin American or Andean bank. Tell me about it. What do you think about this? Mm -hmm. uh, so Chile has probably been one of the best run Latin American countries up to this point. Uh, it has mostly been the result of the government directing a lot of resources into its education system and grassroots development over the years. Um, and for the most part, the country has carried out free market policies with occasional price controls. And it has done a stellar job at holding inflation between 2 to 4%, which is considerably low relative to some of the hyperinflation going on in the rest of the region. And on the next slide, uh, for those reasons, I think Banco de Chile is unlike the vast majority of Latin American banks in the sense that its loan book um, has 64% exposure to consumer and mortgage lending and only 36% exposure to corporate lending. Like if we were to compare that to the major banks in, in the same region, um, Banco de Brazil has only 28% exposure to consumers Banco de la Nación in Argentina has only 14%. Bank Colombia has 22% and so on. And so this 64% right here is a sign that the Chilean population is generally more well off and can afford to take loans and buy things on credit without the bank calling it a significant risk. But that said, I'm seeing several headwinds going forward. Excellent. You know, um, one of the things that has continued to pop up on a screen in our research notes in the in the recent weeks, and for many it may not be very surprising, is that we're talking about um, Latin America here, where the recent health crisis has taken a turn for the far worse. And I'm sure many people have taken notice of the trends that we are seeing in Brazil with the rises no, rising number of cases. And the similar kind of numbers are popping up in a whole bunch of other countries in South America. Do you believe that ultimately this loan exposure with 64% that you're talking about is going to be impacted by what we're seeing on the health crisis? Just a general view on that. Yeah, I think it's going to come back to bite them in uh, the medium term. First of all, I think over the weekend I saw some news where um, – they instigated a total lockdown in Santiago, finally, um, at, after a long time of uh, dilly-dallying and only um, only giving out curfews uh, for for nights. Interesting. Back in back on April twentieth, uh, uh, regarding the Andean banks in general, and Andean essentially refers to the mountain ranges on the west side of the uh, of the South America. So naturally, that's that's Peru, that's Chile, that's Colombia. Um, back on April 20th, Bank of America research note uh, came out with a view taking down the GDP growth estimates for all that Andean banking region by reducing the gross domestic product GDP con uh, estimates for all of those three countries by a measure somewhere between 2.5% to 3% for each of those countries. And then based on those projections, they came back with a view and they said that if this were to truly happen with a 3%, let's say, decline in Chile for GDP in 2020, it would hurt the banking earnings power by as much as 25% on the earnings per share. Uh, now we know since then, when we are looking at the overall trends and for example, related to COVID-19 or related to just the macro environment in general, things have actually taken a far worse scenario since then. So if it was a 25% decline expected in, in uh, for example, in, uh, in this one in Banco de Chile, 
in 2020 with a 3% decline in GDP expected a month ago. I wonder what the new projections when the street starts to remodel, reshuffle its expectations of what it would look like. I think there's a lot more downside. First of all, um, on the next slide, I think both the country and the bank are in the early stages of a secular slowdown driven by an aging population and an ongoing pensions crisis. And um, there's also a lot of deep-seated anger towards living costs and inequality. Like we saw massive uh, violent protests, which began in October in response to the government's decision to raise the capital city's um, subway fares, for example. And these protests are still going on today, albeit in a more subdued fashion due to um, COVID-19. But if we look at the complaints, um, the most prominent and recurring one among the older protesters is regarding a pension system that has left many retirees with insufficient payouts. Like they're receiving as little as $150 to $200 a month, which is way below minimum wage. This is a serious problem because the country also has an aging population where the ratio of old to working age people is about 20%. And uh, the fertility rate has declined to 1.7, which is below replacement. And in my research piece, I do go into detail why there's exact why exactly there's a, a serious pensions crisis. Um, but meanwhile, the younger people are also demanding a whole host of things, like higher wages, higher living costs, and also an improved pension system because they're probably because they're now seeing the problems their parents are facing. So the bottom line is this unrest is not going away anytime soon. And on top of that, um, the central bank has already, already cut rates five times from 3% to 0.5%. And that's, that's before um, COVID-19. And so this has implications for net interest margins as well. Yeah, that's exactly what we're seeing in the U.S. as well. You know, we have been pointing out now for several weeks that we have seen relative underperformance from U.S. banks compared to other large cap stocks uh, coming out from the March uh, March bottom. And particularly in the last couple of weeks, it has been far more pronounced. And, uh, you know, not too long ago in one of my podcasts, I also talked about a regional bank that had huge exposure to the energy sector. Um, not having enough reserves on the books for the decline that we have seen and the impairment charges that we are seeing in the energy sector. And so this is the same problem that's happening across the other countries as well, especially in banks that have huge exposure to commodity cycle, where it's really they're being attacked on two fronts. One, they're not having enough in, uh, not having enough provisions on the books to account for the mounting losses on the particularly in the books related to the commodity cycle and number two um simply the net interest margin as you spoke of you know as because worldwide we have seen the global interest rate environment continuing to trend down and for most countries it's already near zero percent at this time mm -hmm. And and I would add um, the last the last secular headwind would be that the um, 2021 elections where um, there are now three uh, leftist candidates um, running for uh, presidency and in Chile the presidency is always up for grabs because nobody can serve consecutive terms. Yeah, you know, staying on that one, I do want to point out something interesting, you know, and uh, we remember, you know, back in August of last year, there was a uh, there was a sovereign debt downgrade as well as an election outcome that was swept by a leftist um, because of the disruptions that we had seen in the country in the country of Argentina. And as a result, we all remember from August of last year. Uh, those two points led to a major 25% crash in Argentinian stock market in a single day and it was mostly led by banks. And in some cases, I remember, for example, the uh, BBVA, uh, that's the symbol for one of the largest banks in, Brazil, in, in Argentina, crashing by more than 50% in a single session. Now, you believe that something of similar magnitude could happen to Chile as well. And in that line, I want to point out 
that um, there is uh, the, the, the sovereign debt rating is actually currently under review for Chile and with a decision sometime expected between April, which is already behind us, and October of this year. And then immediately after that, we're going to go into this election period in early 2021, which could bring have could have similar kind of devastating impacts if a left leftist government comes to powers as we saw in Argentina. Yep. Now, and... looking sorry, looking at the technicals on your chart. So, where where do you see the chart heading from here over the course of next, uh, let's say, three to six months? Um, I see a revisit of recent lows at 1250. 1250. Here is another technical look that I have over here. You know what thing stands out for me is that on Friday, this stock closed just above $16 per share. It's interesting to me, given the dynamics in play, that is basically back to the same spot where it was in early March. Now, my trend lines over here on this chart are suggesting that it's going to be a step down approach with series of lower highs and lower lows, with stock eventually returning to about $13 per share. You believe that this could still get worse even beyond that? Yeah. Um, so over the next three months, I do see a revisit of $12.50, but um, I, I can see it going even lower over the course of the next year. Over the course of next year, with especially if the sovereign debt rating is impacted and also the elections that are coming up in 2021. Um, do you find this interesting looking at this chart that before all of this GDP contraction figures came into our picture, which was more like in the middle of April, um, this chart is actually back to the early March. Is there any takeaway in that, or is it simply the, the fact that the liquidity injections have taken some of these names to far extremes than perhaps how far they should have gone? Um, I think it's partly because the market is taking um, consensus numbers at face value. So if we look at Banco de Chile's um, net interest income, it was already down 4.3% in 2019. But incredibly, it looks like analysts think that was a trough. Like looking ahead, consensus is expecting the company to report 21% revenue growth for this year, followed by 9% in 2021. So I don't think market participants have fully discounted a COVID-19 escalation simply because of how calm and complacent uh, the government has been up until this uh, past weekend. Um, and that combined with taking these in uh, taking those insufficient uh, COVID-19 testing numbers at face value. So um, if the entire bear case that we described plays out, I think those estimates need to come down significantly. Yeah, we're looking at this chart, if you were to go short, and by the way, this, this stock does not have any options, where would you put your stop? Um, above recent highs at 18 or 19. So eighteen, eighteen dollars, eighteen thirty. Let's suppose you know that would be where your sh where your stop would be, and you're targeting about twelve dollars, twelve dollar fifty cents over the course of the next three to six months, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. So um, that concludes it. Fantastic presentation as always. Uh, you know, we uh, I am personally currently short this stock, as you all know. I've already mentioned this in the chat room a couple times last week. Um, I believe the risks are paramount over here for the Latin American banks, simply for the fact of the deteriorating uh, consumer conditions, as well as the rising COVID-19 cases. And it's one of those out-of-box shorts that not many people will talk about. Um, it will not flag on many, many people's attention. And then more importantly, I believe the sovereign debt downgrade, as well as the risk of a leftist government coming into elections are serious, uh, serious uh, 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 hangovers on the stock that will possibly play out over the course of the next six to 12 months. Uh, Chronicle, thank you very much for uh, for coming over and and we'll see you again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.